All right, so we're going to get started in the uh, the real stuff, the deep waters. We're going to plunge right into the classical Hitayugiri pieces. These pieces are the predecessors to the Shakuhachi Honkyoku that we know, um, and they're great. They were played by wandering monks of no particular religious affiliation. That kind of feel I feel like that opens it up to everybody even a little bit more, which is nice. Um, there was certainly a spirituality there in that the pieces were played with some attention to nature. They were played in five different modes throughout the seasons to kind of make you aware of the changes that happen. And that's a real pleasure to play them. The Oshiki mode, incidentally, is the summer mode. And being that it's summer now, we're going to start with Oshiki because it's seasonally appropriate. And, incidentally, it's also the standard mode of the Shakuhachi. So, uh, by shakuhachi, I mean hitayugiri shakuhachi. Whenever I say shakuhachi, that's probably what I'm talking about. So, that's what we're going to work on first. A couple of basics, okay? Uh, making the sound. Differences from, especially from modern jihari shakuhachi. If you're used to playing sh uh, fuke shakuhachi and edo era shakuhachi, the, the way that you play them is pretty similar, right? The first difference is you need a little bit of a softer breath, right? Modern jihari shakuhachi can really pack a punch, you can get a really sharp, uh, if you want it, it can be bombastic tone, right? These don't do that. Um, and again, even in these uh, Edo era manuals, they'll talk about, oh, it's a little bit of a lighter sound, right? It is, it's a lighter instrument, it's a little bit smaller. Its tones are reminiscent of the phoenix, and as well as the bell, right? I mean, these were played by the Shakuhachi monks of old as well, although they kind of parted ways with the uh, Fuke Shakuhachi players when that became a big thing during the 16 and 1700s. But let's go ahead and make a sound. Right, let's close all the holes. Make a tsutsune, right? That's the pipe sound, is the literal translation. So what's going on there? We're not blasting it with air. If we do that, it doesn't work so well. Actually, this one can take quite a lot of air. But still, you're not supposed to blast it so much. That's what they say. The other thing you want to do different, a lot of especially the modern shakuhachi players will teach you to play very cutty and get a very sharp and clear sound. It's another thing you don't want to do with Edo era shakuhachi or Hitayugiri shakuhachi for that matter. Especially for this, well for the Edo era shakuhachi as well, there's a good reason for that. Number one, the tone is better and more stable, kind of in the center. So let's take a look at our range here, right? right about in the middle. Part of the reason for that is that we're going to be playing in different modes and we have to be able to move a little bit up from the middle sometimes and a little bit down from the middle sometimes. So the Oshiki mode is the most straightforward mode and should be played pretty much straight forward. If you play it not midi and not cutty that will give you a good range for the uh, pieces that we're going to play. Again, making a sound itself. Uh, if you play shakuhachi, it probably won't be much of a problem. You might have to let your body adjust to the instrument a little bit because the opening is often quite a bit smaller than many shakuhachi, especially big long ones. You don't want to put tension into your lips, though. Do you need some tension? Well, yeah, I guess so. Here's what I'm doing, right? You should feel basically relaxed. You're putting just enough power or uh, whatever, something or other, into these muscles to make them open just a crack like you are spinning watermelon seeds out, right? That's my, my buddy Eric the flute maker in Florida said that, spinning watermelon seeds. That's such a good expression. Thank you, Eric. I love you. Right, just a little bit of air leaking out. That's ideal. Not too much pressure, not too much tension. 
should feel pretty relaxed. And again, the Hita Yogiri Shakohachi is kind of small, right? Shakohachi, maybe you're holding it down here. The Hita Yogiri Shakohachi, you're kind of bringing up here, right? So you want to start by relaxing your shoulders. You don't want to give yourself a pain in the neck. Relax those shoulders, let them kind of hang loose. Shake your body a little bit. And as you're holding the Hita Yogiri down, use your arm muscles, just your arm muscles, to kind of bring it up there. Keep those shoulders relaxed. Give yourself a nice kind of strong, straight back. A good posture for your air to go in and out. Shoulders relaxed, the Yugiri up. That should feel good, that feels good. Let's just breathe there a little bit. Shoulders relaxed, fingers light, so they can dance on the flute if they want to. feels good. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so let's go over to the book now, okay? Starting on this page, you've got a bunch of holes being displayed. Hooray for that. What you have first is the 12 notes of the Chinese musical scale, well, the Chinese names for the notes, but it's the same basically as the Western musical scale, but it might be like kind of minus 10 hertz or something like that depending on who you talk to. However, uh, we don't use these in actual Hita Yogiri music, and I don't really care about playing a 12-note scale, so I'll leave that up to you. Uh, you can check out the translation there, and you'll be able to figure that out. It's got the fingerings for playing 12 notes on the Hita Yogiri. Uh, so there you go. Have fun with that if you want to. And then we've got an explanation of the various Hita Yogiri notes, but we're not going to go over those either, because we don't need to yet, because we're only playing the Oshiki mode for now. So let's turn the page. If you go over here, we've got the notes that we use, or the fingerings, I'm sorry, that we use in the Oshiki mode. Oshiki means A, roughly, plus or minus 10 hertz, if A equals 440 hertz. Um, it doesn't need to be spot on. You need to kind of negotiate with your Hita Yogiri and see what she or he wants to play. All right, but let me give you the names of the notes here, and we'll go from top to bottom, from left to right. So starting at the top, we've got the characters written in kanji rather than the katakana that we use in the actual notation. So I'm going to tell you about those. We've got hole. That means the top four holes are closed, the bottom hole is open. The top hole is the back hole on the shakohachi. Hole, it's also called ro, depending on the tone color effect that you use it with. The next note down here is u. Okay, there you go. U has the bottom two holes open. E has the bottom three holes open. Ru has the same pitch as E. That's why it's written after E, presumably. And it's got the holes one and three open. Starting the counting from the bottom, holes one and three are open. You might be tempted to play that like U, lower to half tune, like on the modern shakuhachi, but that would be wrong, because that's not what it is. So don't do it. If you do, though, I won't find out. So, I suppose you can, if you want to. Ta is the next one. That's got the back hole and the second hole closed. And Chi, it's written here, to just to let you know, that is the Oski note in the second octave. And the fourth hole is open, the rest are closed. You've got Fu, that's also the Oski note, right? A, basically, and it's closed. All the holes are closed. Um, Fu is also a tone color note, but we'll get to that later. E, uh, that means that it's a kind of moving note. It's a tone color effect, and all the holes are open. It kind of depends on what note you're playing it after. You kind of let the air pop out of the open holes after certain notes, and the actual pitch is going to vary depending on when you play it. Uh, the next note is He. You'll notice the fingering is the same. But in Oshiki mode, this is an actual pitch that it corresponds to. It's always played at basically the same pitch, and it's got the same fingering as E, but it's a different note. Ya is generally not used in the classical pieces because it gives you a different pitch. In older scores, however, Ya is actually the same as Ta, and uh, it has the same... Well, well, I don't know why that is. I haven't figured that out yet, but we'll get to that when we come to it. In this book, it's not an issue. <coughs> 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm just so excited. <coughs> Ri is the last note. This one is also the same as Oshiki. <coughs> it's a third way to play that same note, or a second way in the second octave. And it's got the fourth hole closed. So there you have it. Those are all the notes. Now let's play them. <coughs> now, why is Fu written after all the other notes, even though they seem to be written in order, in ascending order, but then Fu comes in, huh? Well, the reason is that Fu is a tone color note, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk to that when we come, we'll talk about that when we come to it, okay? <coughs> so here we go. Let's start with whole. And roll. We're going in the same order as we just looked at. I'm sorry. Whole is also roll. U. E. Du. Ka. Ji. U. We'll play it as a tutune right now. Tsutsune means the pipe sound, right? The sound of the tube that is the shakuhachi. E. Mm, whatever pitch is fine. P. E. That's the right pitch. Uh, we're going to skip the because we don't use it. And D. E. Alright, so just to put that in context, this time we're going to take the note Fu, we're going to use it as a tsutsune. We're going to bring it to the front, so we're going to play Fu, Ho, E, Ru, Ta, Chi, I, Ri. Okay, here we go. Ho, uh, Fu, tsutsune. Ho. Do that a couple of times. his shoulders. Hmm. So one thing that we should note is that when you're playing the scale, right, as you're playing these different notes, you might notice that you've got to do some adjusting to the shakuhachi, right? If you play it just straightforward without any adjustments, here's what it sounds like. Hmm? Yeah, that's because Edo era shakuhachi, including this one and including the uh, Komuso shakuhachi as well, are tuned slightly neutrally, right? Uh, they don't ever match by octaves either. We prefer an aesthetic where the holes are evenly spaced. And this allows us to comfortably adjust ourselves to the flute to play in many different tunings, especially for these five different modes. So for the old scheme mode, you're going to notice that maybe my head is doing something particular when I'm playing. See if you can notice, okay? I'm just going to play a straight up scale. So for the kind of feeling is that for 
the tutune. Yeah, it's maybe a tiny bit sharp. But in contrast to that, the second note, whole, is played a little bit midi. See the difference? Then hold that position. And then the next note you're gonna play a maybe a smidge merry. can't maybe see my head move so much, but I'm adjusting that with my breath, right? And then for he, you gotta play that kind of cutty to bring it up to pitch. There's a second way to play he, which is with the bottom three holes covered. Right, and to play it the way we play it in the Oski mode, you got to play it cutty a little bit. This mode is used for uh, kind of when the piece starts out on a he, right? You might kind of use this to go and does it, right? To kind of start it off with a punch. This is what that means. So there you go. We've got all the notes. Now I want to give you just a little bit of an explanation. This ru again. That's the same pitch as e, eh, right? Ru is used for tone color effects called a uh, mawari, right? Or mawaru uh, which will happen when we play some of the pieces and even the netori next. You're going to see that. Fu also is, again, this is more distinct on older scores. And the scores in this book, the fu and the tsutsune aren't necessarily always distinguished. So we got to do a little bit of figuring out in, as, in terms of which is which. Um, a tsutsune fu is played like this, and that's played as a note, right? However, fu is also a hit. It's kind of a tone color effect that's not meant to have a particular pitch, and that is the way that it's usually used. Now, according to an explanation in a, a manual from 1700, uh, the Taizen, is fu you go into tsutsune, you open and close four, you hit four in other words, and then you go to the next note, right? So, for example, if you had this combination e fu e, which happens quite a bit, is not how you want to play it, right? That fu is a hit. So we're kind of kind of have this sort of bubbly effect that happens between the e, right? E fu e. Slow that down for you. So we'll get to that later when we play some of the pieces, but just so you know, that's part of what's going on there, okay? Let's go ahead and play through that scale one more time. We will play Tsutsune, and then following the book, Ho, U, E. Ru, ta, chi, skip fu ni, hi, skip chi, di, uh, skip ya and di.
So there you go. Practice that a little bit, and we'll uh, go on to Netori next time. Cheers.